This is WBUA Law Call. If you are like a lot of folks, you spend a lot of time at your job. So it stands to reason that you might get hurt there, especially if you have a, a job that involves physical work or maybe is, is a little bit dangerous or maybe not. You can get hurt on the job and it will leave you with questions, of course, bills, time off work, and just a lot of, of questions that you may not be able to answer. Can you, do you qualify for workers' compensation? What if you can't go back to work? Can you be fired for being hurt on the work, on the job? Lots to talk about tonight. Maybe you've been hurt on the job. Maybe you haven't and you just have some questions. Any of that, this show is for you here tonight on WVUA Law Call tonight. We're talking about being hurt on the job. This is a very popular topic because, quite honestly, it applies to so many people out there. So if you've got a question, pick up that phone, give us a call. Here's the number. It's 205 348-WVUA-205, 348-9882. Also, you can send your email to lawcall at wvuatv.com. That's a different website address. It's lawcall at wvuatv.com. And Attorney Josh Hayes will be in in just a, a little while to take some of your email questions. So go ahead. Our attorneys are here for you. Get those questions in. Anything about being hurt on the job, that's what we're talking about here tonight on WVUA Law Call. We welcome your questions. While we, you get those questions in, we're going to give you some time to do that and let you know what to expect in the next few weeks here on WVUA Law Call. Next week, May 21st, in time for all those summer vacations hurt on the road. May 28th, DUI, and then June 4th, a chance to meet a local judge. Bob? Terry. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Look, driving to the station tonight. Yes. It was like a ghost town. Oh, in Tuscaloosa. It's, oh. Yeah, it's that time of year that college students have right. left. It's it's pretty calm around right. town, and especially around the campus. Right, and people probably don't know it, but the station is right on campus. Mm -hmm. But nobody was out there. So you just you had the road to yourself. I did. Well, that that is good. That is nice. That is very nice. And Bob, tonight we're talking about being hurt on the job. Right. That's something I know that you handle in your firm mm -hmm. a lot. And it's tough when somebody is hurt at their job. You know, you don't want to lose your ability right. to make a living. Exactly. And if you're on the job when you get hurt, Terry, it's you know obviously your your income is gone. Sure. So so what do you do? And one of the, I know one of the photographs that we're going to show tonight is a person that was injured on the job. And, and you know, you can't really um, tell usually if you just find somebody on the ground, was it an accident or not? I mean, if he just collapsed from some medical condition, he can't get workers comp. Mm -hmm. But if you can see his ha hard hat's off, he's holding his shoulder, all that is circumstantial evidence that it was an accident, which it has to be uh, arising out of your employment. But if that happens, then doesn't matter whose fault it was that you get some of your money and that's something that people don't realize and of course we'll get get into more specifics as we go along tonight but it doesn't have to be that your it can be it doesn't, doesn't have to it can be your fault right correct? it doesn't matter whose fault it is all right and also there <clears throat> is a very specified area of the law that addresses being hurt at work that's different from let's say a car wreck case that, that you would handle that's right it is and you know during the years that i practiced law terry i really have never concentrated on workers comp so because of that uh, we went out and looked around and tried to find somebody that was knowledgeable about workers comp and we found a good one now, i want to welcome our associate to the show tonight paul clemens paul welcome to the show thanks bob it's a pleasure to be here and this yeah. is paul's law call debut tonight it is it is, and you know, let me go ahead and just disclose this immediately. Went to Notre Dame, so for all you people out there that remember the famous Alabama-Notre Dame games, um, you know, we, that's a source of some teasing in the office. <laughs> uh, but he did go there to undergraduate school. He graduated from the University of Dayton in Ohio, got his law degree, and he went out and started practicing um, with a private firm. And then eventually he was a prosecutor, a deputy prosecutor, in I believe Clark County, Indiana, and he got a lot of trial experience, and so that's why um, we lured him down here, but we had a little help. His in-laws are, are William Scroggins, uh, his family, and Paul is married. We was a good friend of mine, and uh, Paul married his daughter, Valerie, and they just had Paul, Philip, Philip Paul. Paul Philip. Paul Philip. Junior. Paul Philip Jr. That's right. Yeah. Paul Philip Jr. And I bet he keeps you really busy. He does. He's starting to move about, and he, he's growing like a weed in the summer. How so. old is he? 
He is uh, a little over four months. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a little one. All right. And you and y'all go to church at St. Francis. That's right. That's right. And uh, we love it here. Uh, well, my wife is from here originally, but I love it here. And um, been down to the south before in Mississippi. So mm -hmm. have that in common with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you're, you're about to endure your, <clears throat> I guess, your first uh, summer in Alabama since you've been down here. So get ready for that. It's a little uh, warm, a little humid. <laughs> I've heard about your summers, and uh, I'm prepared. Yeah, it's not as bad as a northern winter, so I think no. I, I don't think I think you've got the no. good end of the deal, in my opinion. Right. right. But and we are certainly glad to have you here tonight, Paul. And Thank you. how did you? It, of course, you have a pretty varied legal background, but at working as a prosecutor. Mm -hmm. But how did you determine that you wanted to focus on helping people who've been injured? Well, uh, interesting question. Uh, my father was um, a small businessman, and um, he had a business for a number of years. And uh, I just remember from his days as a businessman, you know, he had such a good relationship with his workers, and they uh, often were injured on the job, and so he really tried to help them out. So uh, I just thought that was a great area to get into based on, you know, my family history. Absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. we're going to take a lot of calls tonight. Uh, workers' compensation being heard on the jobs very popular here on WVUA Law Call. So if you've got a question, go ahead, call in. Paul and Bob and, of course, Josh are here for you to answer those questions. And here's the number. It's 205-348-WVUA, 205-348-9882. Let's go ahead and get to those phones that are filling up. Brenda in Tuscaloosa is up first tonight. And, Brenda, your question's a little different from workers' compensation. That's all right. What's your question, Brenda? Do we have Brenda on the line? All right, we'll see if we'll see if we can get Brenda back on the line. But Paul, Bob, and I touched on this mm -hmm. at the beginning of the show. But workers' compensation—it's different from if you've got a car accident or you've been hurt in another way. Explain mm -hmm. how. Well, in a typical car uh, case or a lawsuit. Uh, with the car, there's opportunity to uh, receive damages, pain and suffering, punitive damages, lost wages, and uh, in a workers' comp case, there is no opportunity for damages. What you can get are benefits, medical benefits, um, compensation benefits, and vocational rehab benefits. So that's the one, that's one of the differences for your remedies, but for in terms of workers comp it is faultless system there is there's no determination on who's at fault the employer could be at fault and the employee could be at fault it doesn't matter fault is taken out of the system and when you talk about benefits is it predetermined how much in the way of benefits how much money you can get for a particular injury it uh, it depends if it's um, if you have a well, if you have a permanent disability, uh, there is a, a certain amount you can get. But as a general rule, your benefits are two-thirds of your average weekly wage. And um, that is paid from the point that you get injured until the point that you reach match ma maximum medical improvement. And then at that point, uh, you can still receive uh, benefits for the life if you have a permanent and total injury. All right. Let's get back to those phone lines. Up next is Marcus in Gadsden. Hi, Marcus. Hey. How are you, Marcus? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. good. I hear you got a dog in the background. Yeah, right. Like Kane, too, right now. <laughs> he sure is. That's right. He wants to be on TV, too. That's G -town. okay. G-Town. G-Town, Paul. That's right. That's right. Marcus, what's your question tonight? Uh, do I need to get a lawyer? I'm, I had backs of uh, back surgery, and I'm wondering if I need a lawyer. Workman's comp's paying me right now and everything, but everybody tells me I need to get a lawyer, but I don't have one. I'm just wondering if I'm going to need one. What do you tell Marcus? Well, I would tell him to get a lawyer, Marcus. Um, worker's comp is statutory. It's very specific, and it's also um, very complex sometimes. And so there are many um, rights and, and benefits that you could uh, receive, but often a lawyer is very important to helping you receive those. So I would highly recommend getting a lawyer. You can look in the phone book, uh, word of mouth.